the concept of African art. Uh, I, Why do you put a future. prefix? Why is there a prefix African? Because that basically implies there's art, then there's African art. There's architecture, then there's African. And I get what you're asking yeah. me. I understand because I also, that's what I work within, mm -hmm. right? Many people have critiqued me and been like, you know, these are Africanists and Pan-Africanists. When you call it African art, yeah. you're basically saying that there's, you know, uh, a universal art, mm. which is actually a Eurocentric thing. Correct. And then there's African art, which is, you know. Should, should we dispel the idea because it is a form of identity or should we try and fuse or so, should we separate the two? So there's going to be a kid. We call these free thinkers. And I remember a meme of uh, Jaden Smith and Willow Smith, mm. Will and Jada's kids. Uh, Jaden was dressed in a skirt. His sister was dressed in art art. The sister is polyamorous. The son at some point was not eating. And, you know, and the caption on that picture was, a lot of people don't understand Will and Jada's kids, but what if this is what free kids look and sound and think like? Mm. So you're going to get the kids who are going to be like, ah, like Kanye, why can't I design this? Like, but it looks Italian. You're like, who the hell cares? This is what I like. Sure. And then you want to get the kid who's like, no, I make African art because this is what sells in Europe. I get there and I'm like, I grew up in, a, in an informal settlement. In South and there Africa, are guys like that. And use, oh, and, 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 yes. If you're, going to, a, if you're going to an African art exhibition, there must be drums. There must be African cuisine. And they speak uh, like this. Yes. In Africa, my people. And I know and people. And it sells, boy. My man, I know architects and people who sell their whole thing like that. And you can see who their audience are. And that to me is adaptability because I don't see that guy as, you know, being disingenuous. He's just doing what he needs to do to get to wherever he needs to get to. You know, he's being uh, an entrepreneur because yes. you're selling something, right? And if you are selling something. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. The mic. No problem. Please, please carry on, Shab. If he's, uh, if he's selling something that there's an audience for, yeah. you can do that. But the whole thing of African started a long time ago, dude. You, you, there were people in Europe, you, there were people in Europe, Africans, intellectuals, who started a movement called the Negritude Movement, yeah. right? And these guys were trying to figure out after slavery, after oppression, what are we going to be? Because before we were basically slaves, mm -hmm. non-human. Remember, there were even scientific projects to prove how animalistic blacks were 100%. compared to Europeans. Then they were like, but now if we get liberation, are we going to be promoted to being white or European? Because hum human was defined as white. They went, Europeans went through a lot of trouble proving that being a human is them. Which is still the case today. We had a chat with Musi Maimani and that was one of his issues at the DA before he left. Sure. That you've got white liberals whose concept of being liberal is within a white framework. Exactly. And if you're, I think the example used was if you're taking leave from the DA, you're like, oh, no, at home, it's your part. Uh, we need to do something. For, they don't recognize that as a leave. Sure. The leave must be sick leave or my child's getting baptized, something Eurocentric. Exactly. And this is something that academics debate about a lot. It's a well-known um, issue, right? It's this white supremacy issue. Yeah. Now, those same guys then said that, look, we can't say that we are animals anymore. We're no longer animals. We don't perceive ourselves like that. But we can't say that we're human if human is white. The only concept of human the is The only white. concept of humanity day, is... can't even speak English. Yeah. Why are you dressed like... Why is your hair looking like that? Bri, you Chaba, know, you're a lecturer. You represent vets. Exactly. You have to be an example. <laughs> exactly, right? But now they came up with a different option and they called it strategic essentialism which is we need to essentialize what it is to be African. In other words, there's a, there's a difference between European and African in terms of the model of humanity. Ours is like this, and this one is like this. And, the, you know, lo and behold, the Europeans critiqued them and they said this is an, a racist, anti-racist movement. Come on. Because you're basically saying that there's a, race, a racial difference or there's a difference because of race between Europeans and white people. And they were like, yeah, we hear that, but 
in order for us to really assume a position of having legitimate contribution to the notion of humanity, mm -hmm. we need to somehow separate ourselves because if we just fall into being human as being European, it basically means that the struggle was the struggle to be Euro European yeah. and to be, you know, um, validated. Sure, I want to grow up to be umlum. Yeah. So they came up with this thing called negritude. And so it was critiqued for being a, a racist, anti-racist movement. And that's where all of it started. That's where African jazz, they were poets. Mm. So they started with African poetry. Then there was African music. Then there was African art. Then there was African architecture and African whatever. So I'm saying that it's necessary for us right now to essentialize ourselves and to say that there's such a thing called African design. Why? Because so you don't mind the prefix? I don't mind it, but we need to be conscious of its implications. We need to understand its history, yeah. right? And that there are people out there that are, I mean, dude, on LinkedIn, the amount of times I've been attacked because I'm always talking about how things need to look. Yeah. You need to look at something and it must look like mm -hmm. this is an African thing. Or at least it must give you some sort of indication that this thing is got um, an African authorship. Sure. So it was created by a black person. I yeah. would have never guessed. Exactly. <laughs> because otherwise, you know, we're still dealing with this thing of uh I mean, there was a there was um there was a time uh I think it was during the BRICS thing. There was this guy who was the president of some bank or whatever, and they asked him to talk at BRICS. And the guy came up to the stage, he's a black guy. And the first, you know, when he opened his mouth, you could hear that, yo, you know, um, I'm here to talk about uh, what we've been doing in our organization. And I'm just like, yes. Like, Why are you judging, Charlie? I'm not being judgmental. So judgy. It's not being judgmental. The point that I'm making is He's that- He's doing the opposite of the- Yeah. You know, in my, village, my village, village, you know, Yeah, exactly. He's doing my, the <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, it's a battle. It's a mm. struggle. And people who don't appreciate the fact that I'm talking about we need to have things that look and feel and at least there's some uh, way in which you can identify its authorship belonging to a black person. And the reason why we need these patrons, by the way, no, I don't mind black, white, gray, Indian patrons. Hey, if you've got the money <laughs> and you support <laughs> us, Baba, you but, know. But there'll be so an guy. African signature but the, Yeah, but the point is it needs to feel like, you know, there's something that we've achieved as African people. And not to say we haven't achieved anything, yeah. but it really needs to uh, motivate us. You know, I'm really excited about the future, yeah. you know, because I really, really imagine every single day our version of Singapore, mm. which is Wakanda. You know, we can talk about Wakanda, yeah. our version of Singapore, Dubai, our version of Dubai, whatever. You yeah. know, the only critique I have with Dubai is the fact that they didn't count on the fact that, you know, they're going to be dealing with this thing of um prices of oil and all of that it's yabakawata somehow and they actually have a plan to have a post oil you know dubai economy and what was, a yeah. post oil economy but the point is you know critique dubai as much as you want what is our dubai what is our singapore yeah. can you imagine can you imagine guys walking in the street kids walking in the street you know whether they are lani or they're not lani and they're playing on their skateboards and they're walking around and they can walk into a museum and they can go to a theater and they can do whatever in South Africa. I mean, come on, is that really too much to ask for?